All right, welcome back, guys. So we're going to talk today about the Williams Grove National Open coming up this weekend, Friday and Saturday. It is the third leg of the Triple Crown, so to speak, in sprint car racing, that being the Williams Grove National Open, the Knoxville Nationals, and the Eldora Kings Royal. What we have here on the board is quite a mess. This was a good idea in my head, and now that I look at it, it is very, very busy and a lot going on. But I know we've got a lot of new channel members, or uh, subscribers, excuse me, uh, that have maybe never seen me do a video like this. So basically what I have here is the World of Outlaws over here. I've got the PA Posse here, and then I've got the Invaders slash the High Limit guys that will be in the field. Uh, and I've got five in each section here, and it's ranked from the guy who I think has the least amount of chance to win in that faction, and the guy at the top that I think has the best shot to win for his particular group, that being the Outlaws, the Posse, or the Invaders. So uh, we're going to pull off a magnet from whoever it is and put them on the board down there. And I've got some words here. I'm not expecting you guys at all to read this stuff. That is for me to uh, reference off of. I also have my computer over here with a couple of other additional notes for each guy that I want to talk about and provide my argument why I think they could be potentially a winner of this race coming up this weekend, which is $75,000 to win. I'd like to try and keep this video around 12 minutes. We'll see how I do. So uh, we'll start things off at number five for the Outlaws. And this guy has been very good here in the past. I got to try and find him. It's going to be Sheldon Hodenshield. So I got Sheldon at number five. Uh, and here's a couple of things that I think that, you know, he could work on or some things that I think that may either hinder him or make him, uh, you know, a winner of this race. In 32 Williams Grove Speedway starts with the Stenhouse Junior Marshall Racing 17 car. He's only been in the dash with that car 11 times at the Williams Grove Speedway, uh, meaning that he's had to pass a ton of cars to get some good finishes. He has a plus minus of 67 in his career at the Grove with that race car. Uh, he did win a race with the Outlaws at the Grove in 2021. And I think if Sheldon can qualify really well, if he can put himself into the dash, because when he is in the dash, uh, those 11 times he's been in the dash, seven of them have resulted in podium finishes. So if he can get in the dash, I think he's got a really, really good chance to win this race. He's always been fast at the Grove. Just can't seem to get into that dash and put him himself in position to win the race. Now, let's go on to number five for the PA Posse here. Let me make sure I've got my stuff dialed in here for that fifth place guy. Yes, I do. So our fifth place guy, let me try and find him. Here he is. I'm going to go with the guy that is currently second in the Williams Grove Speedway point standings. That is Troy Wagaman Jr. Now, I understand Wagaman definitely going to be a long shot for the posse here, but he does have a win this year at the Williams Grove Speedway on April 26th. He is currently second in their point standings coming into the weekend, and he has a 6.0 average finish this year at the Grove. He did run seventh against the Outlaws during the Summer Nationals earlier this year, so he has ran well a couple of times. He ran well with high limit at Port Royal this year. He's definitely taken a big step this year in his career, that being Troy Wagaman Jr. in the Mike Hefner 27. He is definitely probably the longest shot on the board, but I think that he could be a guy that ends up inside the top five at some point this weekend if he can qualify good, get himself into the dash, because we all know at the Grove, uh, the racing, it is tough to pass. If you could be in the dash, your chances are way, way better of winning the race. Uh, obviously, that's every track, but the Grove especially, you know, I'm going to be watching this weekend, you know, obviously to, to pay attention to what's going on. Uh, but if I was to go, it wasn't be for the racing. It'd be for the vibes, uh, all the people getting excited, Beer Hill, you know, the infield, all that stuff is so much fun. Uh, the racing, uh, it has been better in the past. Let's just say that at the Grove. Now, number five for the invaders or the high limit guys, where am I at here? Uh, we're going to go with Tyler Courtney in the 7BC. So Sunshine uh, last year led five laps in the 2023 National Open prelim night. He would end up finishing fourth in that main event. So uh, he has not been you know, in contention for a National Open win before, but he has shown speed there. He was in the dash both nights last year. Obviously, he was in the dash for the prelim night, and then he was in the dash as well on the National Open night. He finished 10th in that main event. Sunshine has been pretty solid on the half miles over the last couple of years. I've got him at number five for the Invaders and four high limit racing guys uh, on this board. Now, moving back over to the Outlaws at number four on their side of the list here. And I feel like this could be a little bit low for Carson Macedo, but I'm going to put him at number four. He was the 2021 National Open winner. Uh, he was third this year during the Summer Nationals. The reason I have Macedo so low, I feel like that car has been much better on half miles in years previous. 
It has not been a fantastic season for him when it comes to the big racetracks. He did get a Jackson Nationals win, uh, you know, a prelim night win there, but he didn't get any wins during Knoxville, no wins during Volusia, no wins during Eldora. We've seen that car be very, very good on the half miles before. Uh, this year just quite hasn't been that way. He's been much better on the smaller tracks, but I think Carson is still very good at, at Williams Grove, and you got to have him inside the top five for the Outlaws going into this weekend. Now, moving over to the posse, where are we at here on the posse side of things? Okay, yes, we have to have this guy on the list. And at number four, I'm going to put Lance DeWeese. So DeWeese, I feel like if he was in the 69K, I would have him a little bit higher on my list here. But he is a five-time National Open winner. He got a win this year driving that Barry Shearer Racing car on uh, May 3rd. So he has went to Victory Lane this year driving that race car. And in my opinion, you just can never count out Lance DeWeese at these big races in central Pennsylvania. If you do, you could find yourself regretting it a little bit later. I've got to have DeWeese in that list. Um, you know, he was up front, led a bunch of laps during the Tuscarora 50 weekend with high limits. So we know the car can run up front. We know DeWeese can get the job done. I've got him at number four, you know, due to the simple fact that he has been absolutely unbelievable at that racetrack over the last 20 years. You cannot have Lance DeWeese on this list. Now, moving over to the invader side of things, we're going to go to a guy that uh, is right here, and it is Brad Sweet. So Brad Sweet, uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be there. I texted him yesterday. He said it was a maybe, and it sounded like his guys wanted to go. So it sounds like Brad Sweet will be there. Last year, he did get a prelim night win at the National Open, and it took 53 races for Brad Sweet to ever win a race at the Williams Grove Speedway. But ever since he got that win, in the next eight starts, he's won three races, probably should have been four. He got passed with 30 feet to go to the finish line by Logan Schuhart in another race. So Brad Sweet been fantastic at the Grove here as of recently. He has not ran at the Grove since last year, though, so it could take him maybe that first night to get things figured out. Uh, his worst finish in the last eight races for him, as I mentioned, he's got three wins, almost four in those races. His last or his worst finish was an eighth place run besides the night where he blew a rear end in half. That was, I think he finished like 27th, did not get back out there. But the rest of his finishes where he didn't break, he was inside the top eight. So Brad Sweet, certainly you got to have him on the list as well in the Casey Kane Racing 49 car. Now, back over to the Outlaws here. Let me make sure I got my notes right here. You got, it's just like DeWeese. you got to have this guy on the list. Of course, where is he on my... Oh, there he is right there. Donnie Schatz. So Donnie Schatz at number three on the list, six times a National Open winner, and he has been nothing short of fantastic this year when it comes to the half miles. Uh, let's take a look at some of the things on his list here. He was second this year at the Summer Nationals. He was second at the big Knoxville race, not the Nationals, but the one in uh, June. He was second there. He was second at Eldora this year four times between Let's Race 2 and the King's Royal Week. He got a Jackson uh, Jackson Nationals win. He got a Volusia win. So Donnie Schatz has been very good on these big racetracks this year. He's a 21-time Williams Grove Speedway winner, and you literally cannot have him on this list. Uh, if you did, you literally don't know anything about sprint car racing. So Donnie Schatz at number three for me for the Outlaws. Now back over to the posse. And we're going to move into a guy that has had a breakout year, and I'm probably going to get some flack for this one for having him at number three for the posse, but you literally cannot die the, deny the numbers that he's put up this year. I am going to put TJ Stutz at number three for the posse. He got a win this year against the Outlaws at the Summer Nationals. He's got three other, or uh, sorry, two other wins this year at Williams Grove Speedway. He ran third or second, what, I think it was second at the Tuscarora 50 against High Limit. Uh, TJ Stutz has been unbelievable this year. Uh, his last eight races at the Grove have resulted in 5.7 average finish for him. And uh, you cannot deny the speed that this team and this driver have had this year. It's been a whole lot of fun to watch, and I hope to see it continue this coming weekend at the National Open. Put TJ Stutz at number three for me on the posse. I know somebody in the comments is going to be absolutely pissed at me, but I don't care. This is my video. If you want to make your own, as I say, go get your own whiteboard and you can do this, all right? I got Stutz at number three. Invaders and High Limit back over to their number three driver. And I think this guy has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder going into a track at his team's home base, Justin Peck at number three for the Invaders. Last year, he led five laps during the National Open. He would go on to finish six in that main event after leading those five laps. Uh, but Peck has been very good at the Williams Grove Speedway here as of recently. 
Uh, he uh, Last nine races, he has not been worse than ninth, besides one where he led a bunch of laps and he blew a tire late in the race. Uh, besides that, he has not been worse than ninth uh, in his last nine races. So Peck has been very good at the Grove, and his team is from the Grove or from the, the Pennsylvania area. And I think Justin Peck, like I said, has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder with this news that came out recently about him going to or losing the, the Boot Motorsports ride. And who knows where he's going? Nobody really officially knows yet. But I think that Peck is going to be driving hard to try and show that, you know, I can still get the job done in this car, even though he just did it last two weeks ago at the Eldora Speedway. So uh, I think Peck, definitely a chip on the shoulder. It was hard for me to not put him honestly higher up on this board because he is that good at the Grove. Now, back over the Outlaws. And into number two on their side is going to be Gio Selzy. Giovanni Selzy. I'm going to have to move that down, aren't I? Or else we're not going to be able to fit our next guy. Selzy at number two. Uh, his half mile finishes this year. Let, listen to this, guys. He has been so good this year. Second at the Knoxville Nationals. He got a double down duels win during Eldora Speedway's Kings Royal. He was leading the Joker's jackpot when he wrecked. Uh, he was second at Let's Race 2. He was six both times uh, with the Outlaws earlier this year at the Grove. And uh, he's won a National Open prelim before in his career. Uh, Gio Selzy has been very, very fast this year. Kind of low-key underrated, I would say. Uh, but I feel like with him in that car, they are always good on the big racetracks. And G uh, Gio's been to victory lane before during this weekend of action. And you've got to have him on the board here, especially with the speed that he's shown on the big racetracks so far this year. Now, moving back to the center column and the PA Posse. Let's make sure I've got my notes in order here. Yes, we're going to go with Danny Dietrich at number two. Now, a, a not a spoiler, but a something that you need to pay attention here with Dietrich. He literally has to qualify well, or this is not going to work out for him. He is the 2016 National Open winner. He does have three wins this year at the Williams Grove Speedway. Uh, a 6.6 .6 average finish at the track this year. Uh, but like I said, if he does not qualify good, you could basically ride him off and he's not going to be a factor because that is where that team has struggled this year. Uh, all year is qualifying. If they can lay down a good lap and get into the dash, he is one of the best along with Freddie Raymer at passing race cars at the Grove in the feature. I should have looked up his plus minus when it comes to the outlaw races over the last couple of years because he has been the hard charger several times. And Danny Dietrich, very, very good at passing cars. So I've got to have him at number two. If he qualifies good, I would not be shocked at all to see him win the race this weekend at some point, whether that's the prelim night or the big show on Saturday. Now, moving into the invaders once again and the high limit guys, and I'm going to go with the defending champion of the National Open, and that is Brent Marks. So Marks winning it last year in 2023 for the second time in his career. Ever since 2023, at the Williams Grove Speedway, Brent Marks has 16 starts and five victories a 5.9 average finish. So uh, we all know how good that Brent Marks is at the Grove. He got a PA Speed League win last year as well. Uh, and so we know that he's very good here. And uh, it's been a little bit of a tough year for Brent Marks. This could be an opportunity for him to kind of put the, you know, the, the exclamation point on the end of the season and win a big race. Uh, so keep an eye on Brent Marks. You know, he hasn't raced, what, since Eldora, right? So He's been off a little bit. He's been home, hanging out with a new kid, maybe a little bit rejuvenated, feeling a little bit uh, motivated here as well. I think Brent Marks could be a guy to keep an eye on here when it comes to the National Open on Saturday night. Now, the number one guy for all three of these categories coming up right now, you probably already know who it is for the Outlaws. It is going to be David Gravel in the Big Game Motorsports number two. So two times a winner of the National Open, the last one coming quite a while ago, 2017, I believe. His last 29 starts at the Grove, he has been in the dash 26 times. He has missed the dash three times in 29 starts. So you know Gravel is going to be starting up front in this race at some point this weekend. And during the Summer Nationals this year, he finished first and he finished second. And uh, obviously we know how crucial it is to be in the dash at the Grove. We've talked about it several times already in this video. And Gravel is probably more than likely going to start in the first four rows during the Saturday night portion. And if he draws, you know, row one or two, he's going to be a tough car to beat. Uh, that is for sure. So Gravel is the number one guy for me when it comes to the outlaw side of things coming into this weekend. Now, obviously, we probably all know who's number one for the posse as well. And that is going to be Anthony Macri in the 39M. Four times a winner this year at the Williams Grove Speedway. 
And uh, he was third at the National Open in 2022. He was fourth in 2023, or was it 2021? Excuse me, he was fourth. And uh, what we got here? Fourth. He was fourth during the Morgan Cup slash Summer Nationals earlier on this year. So he has ran well this year at the Grove. There is no doubt about that. And uh, he did get a Speed Week win this year as part of those four victories. So Anthony Macri, 16 wins this year overall in sprint car racing. And I feel like if you don't have him at number one or number two on your list, then you're probably kidding yourself and you probably should go read uh, the thethirdturn.com or any place that has statistics because he is the number one guy in Pennsylvania. If you even count him as Pennsylvania, I'm going to do it in this video just so people don't get mad at me. But as I say that, people are going to get mad at me anyways because of my number one guy on the invader side, and that is Darren Pittman. I've got Pittman at number one for the invaders. I know what everybody's going to say. He's a posse guy. Where was he born? Oh, Oklahoma. Right, right. He was Oklahoma born. Yeah, he was an outlaw for a long time. He ran PA a little bit. Yep, okay. He's in a PA car. Okay, I get it. Right, I get it. I understand. But I'm going to put Pittman on the invader side because he's ran like 11 races the entire season. He ran, the last race he ran was the Knoxville Nationals, guys. It's been a long time since he's been in the race car. That's why I like this event so much because he can get back used to it on Friday night at the, at the National Open. It does have no bearing on the next night. He could be, you know, fresh and ready to go for Saturday. We remember how close he was to winning this race last year. Led a bunch of laps, started six, blew right by everybody, peeled the stickers right off the side of their car, and got passed very late in the race by Brent Marks. Darren Pittman is very, very motivated to win this race. He has finished second at the National Open seven or six times. Second six times at this race. His very first race of the season, he got a win at the Grove on May 31st. Uh, the guy still has it. It's like riding a bike for him. He's got probably the best car in Pennsylvania underneath of him and around him. Uh, it's hard to not have Darren Pittman at the, on this list at some point. If you want to get mad at me in the comments and say he should be here, then do it. I, I, I honestly, I don't really care, uh, but I got to have uh, you know Pittman on this list because he's been so very good. His other finishes this year, he's been fast. He was fourth during the Summer Nationals with the Outlaws. He was fourth at the Capitani Classic. He was fourth on his Knoxville Nationals prelim. And he was 11th at the Nationals. Before, you know, he's running second and third for a large part of that race, kind of faded late. But Darren Pittman's still showing. Uh, you know, he's still on the front row of the Nationals. So he's still showing that he has the ability to get the job done. And I'm going to put him at number one for the Invaders side of things. So let me know what you guys think about this video. Was it too crazy with all the magnets on the board? Let me know. Also, let me know uh, who you would have on these lists that I don't have. Who would you replace? Who would you take out? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. And we will talk to you guys again here tomorrow on the channel, maybe even later today if any news breaks. But we'll let you know on that. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.